Welcome to the Next Level Income Show. I'm Chris Larson. And I'm Caleb Wellborn. And this is where we help you take your income and your investments to the next level. Today on our show, we have Sean McKay, who is Senior Vice President of American IRA. He received his BA in economics from the University of South Florida. He's been investing in real estate for the last 15 years and during that time has built a portfolio of rental properties. He's also invested in tax certificates and notes. And he's also served on the board of directors for the Charlotte, uh, I'm sorry, the Metrolina RIA, which is a nonprofit real estate organization. He's also chaired the Charlotte Landlord Group. He enjoys using his education and experience to teach investors how to optimize their resources with tools such as their retirement account. And we're honored to have Sean on the show from Charlotte, North Carolina today. Sean, thanks for being on board. Thanks a lot, Chris, Caleb. Appreciate you guys having me. Absolutely. So Sean, you and I met, I think it's been more than five years ago now. And I reached out to American IRA. Um, my, my wife and I use our self-directed IRA for, for some different investments. And this was probably even before I joined my partner, Pete, at Canal Capital Partners and started investing in multifamily, which you and I have talked a lot about. Um, I, I liked American IRA because I was amazed that you guys are actually based here in Asheville, North Carolina. So, uh, Sean, do you mind, you mind telling uh, the audience a little bit about your history? I mean, you're a young guy. How'd you end up as, as the uh, VP of American IRA at, at a young age? Absolutely. So, uh, oddly enough, um, I actually wanted to be like you, Chris, uh, when, I was, when I was getting out of college. Um, as you said, I'd been fortunate to uh, get involved with some rental properties, uh, some pretty horrendous deals to start. Uh, didn't quite grasp that whole net operating income concept that's kind of important for rental properties. Uh, but I wanted to just be out there and flipping houses and doing all of that. And uh, what I realized pretty quickly was I didn't have the skill sets to actually uh, survive doing that sort of work. So our principal at American IRA, Jim Hitz, I knew him as the real estate investor and as the entrepreneur. And I said, you know, I'd love to come up and spend some time originally from Florida. And he said, yep, that's great. You know, we'll, uh, we'll kind of go through some of my deals, but I have this financial services company. It'd be a great idea. And, uh, you know, at first I was, I was kind of reluctant to get involved. I'm in my, at this point, my mid twenties. And, you know, I had this vision of getting out there and making a million bucks a year, flipping houses and, you know, doing all the fun stuff you see on TV. Right. And, uh, shortly after that, I kind of hit that wall and I said, boy, a paycheck sounds amazing right now. And so, uh, you know, I didn't, didn't have the wife and kids yet, just moved up there. And uh, it's been a great uh, 10 year period now. So I wish I could have hit the ground running, but in, in retrospect, I feel like I kind of have the best of both worlds where I get to add value to people's retirement accounts. And, and a lot of what we deal with is real estate. So that's, that's kind of dovetailing with my my passion and my interest, but then um, I get to do my investing on the side. So I, I like to tell people I'm kind of like the luckiest guy in the world. It's like I won a lotto and, you know, I just kind of get to live the passion on a daily basis. That's but, awesome, man. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. And uh, yeah. it was a tough time 10 years ago. I mean, we all took some bruises in, in the real estate market during that time. And uh, it's, I think what's really cool is the companies and the individuals that came out of the great recession, you know, you got like, you got Facebook, you got Google, uh, a lot of the companies and individuals are, are, they're rock stars today or they're, or these mega companies, you know? So that's, sure. that's a, that's an interesting, interesting time and a, and a great <laughs> story. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's a lesson to be taken there from what you're talking about, about realizing what you were good at and then focusing on your strengths. And a lot of people they want to be doing something kind of like you were saying, but then they're not self-aware enough to realize, you know what, I'm actually really good at this other thing. So for anyone listening who may be going through a time like that, Sean realized what his strengths were, went with it, and I was crushing it. So it's cool to see. So Sean, can you tell us a bit about the history of self-directed IRAs and why it is that it seems not that many people know about them? Yeah, absolutely. So... When you look at the self-directed IRAs, I think there's this misconception that we're talking about a totally different type of retirement account. That if you currently have a traditional IRA with fill-in-the-blank firm, that retirement account changes forms with us. And that's actually not true. Really, when we're talking about self-directed, 
you're just simply working with a financial services company that can handle out outside assets, assets aside from stocks, bonds, mutual funds, what we call alternative assets. Mm -hmm. And so really what you're looking for is that firm that's essentially willing to handle the paperwork associated with it. So your retirement account is staying in its same form, the same rules and regulations apply to it, the same ability to, to make contributions and take distributions, all of that kind of stuff is identical. And so what you see is that the vast majority of us are working with financial services companies that strictly deal with the securities, the stocks, the bonds, and the mutual funds. And so we're unfamiliar with these concepts because our initial relationships are in these kind of product-driven companies. And I'm the first one to say they're terrific resources for many people they just want to plug some money with a advisor or somebody who's going to make the decisions for them. That really is the best fit. But for, for people like yourselves that are entrepreneurs that are out there creating concepts, this is really hugely valuable. So, so, so Sean, uh, I, I want you to talk a little bit about how American IRA is different, but you touched on an interesting point there. Um, what, what can people invest in? in a self-directed IRA? Like, can you, stocks, bonds, uh, you know, we started talking about real estate. What What's the investment landscape look like? Yeah, absolutely. So the interesting thing is the way the IRS code is written is it tells us what we cannot invest in. So it doesn't give us a list of things we can invest in. It, you, it doesn't say you can invest in stocks and mutual funds and rental properties, whatever it may be. It simply says you cannot invest in collectibles, or life insurance policies. Okay. So certainly that's that's kind of a limited list. Um, so we'll see clients going through a wide spectrum. As you mentioned, Chris, certainly clients can still invest in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds with their quote unquote self-directed account. But really, if you're going to be with a truly self-directed firm, you're with a group like us because you are investing in real estate, for example. So you're either directly acquiring real estate, whether it's single family or multifamily, as certainly you're the expert on. Uh, there's the aspect of lending, many times secured by real estate as well. So kind of being the bank for other people. And then we that's, also see... That, that's, how, that's how we started with ourselves. Right. Right, right. Yeah, so I'm, I'm familiar with that. Absolutely. And, and we're also seeing a lot of precious metals such as gold and silver, the physical ownership of that, and investing in privately held companies. So certainly we're all familiar with the Exxons of the world, the Apples, those huge, large public conglomerates. But there's also a lot of individuals that are starting a company in, in your own community. So maybe it's a restaurant, maybe it's a investment group that's buying multifamily properties. There's a lot of ways you can go with that. So can I invest in my own restaurant? Good question. So, uh, so Which there's a bit of a debate. That's, that's hypothetical, by the way. I don't have a restaurant. Right. <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah, so I don't want to get in that business. Not right now. That's a tough business, right? Yeah. Low, oh, low yeah. margins there. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. yeah you, great, you be... great restaurants here in Nashville, but uh, better left to better left to those, those individuals than us for sure. Absolutely. And so really what you see is there's a concept where uh, some firms will promote a Rob's model, a rollover as business startup, where they think it's appropriate and allowable for individuals to use their own retirement accounts to invest in a business such as a restaurant that they are actually employed in and draw a salary from. Our stance and our legal stance uh, our legal staff stance, I should say, is that that's, that's not appropriate because of the prohibited transactions and, and how those things interact. So the short answer is, if you're using your retirement account, largely you want to be using that for investments where you're not necessarily the principal that has a majority ownership in that type of business and that... Um, in many situations, you're, you're quite passive as it relates to that investment itself. That's interesting. So how, uh, what makes you guys different, Sean, aside from being in, in Asheville, North Carolina? So to me, I think there's some, there's some obvious tangible elements and then there's some aspects of, I love this company. It's provided so much for me and I'm going to have a very biased opinion there. <laughs> but 
as you look at the fees associated with our service, it's really kind of revolutionary in the self-directed space. Most firms charge you more money each year as your account balance grows. So your annual fee component is graduated as you go from 100 to 200, et cetera. Our stance has been because it's self-directed and because, Chris, as you said, being a client, if you take the steps to double your account in a few years, congratulations, well done. I haven't had any sort of um, influence in that whatsoever in terms of adding value as an advisor might or something of that nature. So the way we've constructed it is a flat annual fee, and we just simply have one break point. If it's under 7,500, it's 165 a year. If it's 7,500 and over, it's 285 a year, which if our client has a two or three hundred dollar, uh, two hundred three hundred thousand dollar account, that could be a five, six, eight hundred dollar swing in terms of the annual fee. I, I hear you there. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a great setup. Uh, my friend Rodrigo Afonador with Asheville Cash Buyers was talking about mm-hmm. you guys to me a few weeks ago. I had dinner at his house and he had only great things to say about you guys. He's a great guy. He, uh, he, he had the privilege of doing about 52 takes of me trying to do an intro video about uh, six months ago. It was, <laughs> it was brutal. I can't talk about myself. I love the, the product. And I'm passionate about that. But trying to get 30 seconds about me is, is uh, horrendously awful for all involved. So he's, he's a great guy. Very patient, man. Well, you fool us today, man. You did great. Yeah. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> So with uh, Canal Capital Partners, about 25% of our investors use their IRA. What and why do you use your IRA to invest in real estate? For me, I think the premise really with any of these self-directed accounts is that the account holder should be first investing in something that they believe in, that they understand. And it's so important to, to invest in what you understand because we see so many people, they're in the stock market and they buy high and they sell low because they, they're not following these companies. They're not reading the annual reports. They're not putting that work in. And that belief part is that second concept because even when you, you have a friend who's maybe really competent in a certain type of investment, if you're not a believer, you're still going to get out, as we all know, when people are panicking, when there's the, like we had in December, where the markets are kind of all over the place and there's some heavy drops. So I think that that level of understanding and belief go hand in hand. And for me, I've certainly spent my investing career trying to become a competent real estate investor with varying degrees of success there. But ultimately, that's where I spend my time. And so I think that's where I should put my investment dollar. We have those that spend a lot of time learning about private equity. And so they understand looking at tech companies, for example. Maybe they work in the tech field. And so that is probably where they should be putting their investment dollars. So it's really all about connecting with your skill sets, I think. So that sounds like a real strength of the self-directed IRA is that you can choose what you know about and put your money into it. That sounds fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah, it's no, I think, you know, a lot of people, they don't realize that that there are options out there, Sean. And mm-hmm. uh, I've been I was just, just finished a book and it talks about, you know, how do you how do you diversify your risk? And I talked to like in, in the book that I wrote, uh, I talk about how if you had real estate, you can you can diversify your risk, but it's not REITs. It has to be privately held real estate. Uh, you can do mm-hmm. the same thing with um you know, other types of alternative investments, private lending, which is becoming big. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people say, well, I didn't, I didn't know I could use my IRA for this. I was doing some research before the show and and thinking like, okay, well, how much, how much money is out there? So a couple, a couple stats to share with the audience today. So the average, I'm going to quiz you, Sean, how much do you think (laughs) the average retiree has in their IRA uh, upon retirement? So say 65. Yeah. So I, I've actually seen a wide range in, in the median values, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so we'll say somewhere around maybe 200,000. Did you nailed it? Yeah. Yeah. Like two, 250, 250,000. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then when you added it all up, this is the money that blew my mind. Uh, the total is 9.2 trillion in the United States in, in IRAs. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you look at, if you look at that amount in there, I don't, I, I don't know if you know this, mm-hmm. uh, like what, what total is, is in self-directed? I got to imagine it's a very, a very small amount of that. What are your thoughts? 
Absolutely. So the last study on the self-directed concept that I saw was probably about five years ago. And if memory serves, it was somewhere around four or 5%, according to that study that I saw. That's certainly grown. Yeah. I would imagine it's probably closer to seven or 8% as we've seen just a massive influx of marketing, of firms providing the service over the last few years. So I think the awareness has has certainly grown, at least in the investment specific community. So how many around how many clients do you guys have with American IRA? Yeah, so we're a little north of uh, four thousand currently. Okay, awesome. I was talking to uh, trying to think where where the gentleman's from 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 Charleston. He runs a, a hedge fund out of Charleston. They do um, they do uh, you know some different form of lending, and I, I brought you up, and he he knows you so. I'll, from uh, Charleston Capital. I don't know if you know yes, those guys. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So we were we were talking about you the other day. Maybe your maybe your ears were burning. But <laughs> aside from so private lending, uh, commercial real estate, uh, Kale was talking about you know residential real estate with our friend Rodrigo. What mm-hmm. other types of investments aside from precious gold do you see the most in your clients? I think certainly the private stock, the private equity, where people are in varying ways investing in non-publicly traded companies. So an example would be uh, you're starting to see more startup banks, more community banks coming online. And so what they're doing is they're raising private stock. And so we've been fortunate enough to be uh, the vendor for some of those groups. And so as they're kind of raising that capital, this is a great opportunity because uh, certainly people tend to be a bit more patient and have a longer time horizon with their retirement dollars versus that that personal money and checking and savings accounts. Cool. I, I didn't know that. So that's, uh, yeah, it's interesting. You know, you look at the, the banking industry has changed a lot over the past mm-hmm. decade since Dodd-Frank and a lot of these products are coming out of that. So it's cool that you guys are able to help facilitate and, and fill that void. Absolutely. Yeah, Sean. So a lot of our listeners are high income professionals like surgeons and lawyers, and they have somewhat of a fixed income that they can expect and Mm -hmm. are counting on. But then we also have entrepreneurs and business owners and sales professionals with more of a variable income. Is there a difference in strategy that these two groups should take when it comes to planning with their IRA? Um, Or yeah, what would you recommend for each of them? It's a great question. So really, as you're looking at the the individual, I have to preface this by saying we're really kind of the low man on the totem pole as it pertains to clients with their financial planning. Certainly, their attorneys and especially their CPAs are great resources as they're identifying the type of account. Uh, but I think certainly for for The high income earners, I think a lot of times the small business plans that can also be self-directed can be useful tools. And with many of those account types, you can kind of turn the volume up and down depending upon what the income is in your business for that year. Um, So certainly that's that's a major component. Uh, For the real estate entrepreneur, if they're self-employed and they do not have full-time employees, there's a product called a solo 401k. And there's a lot of benefits to that. But to me, what is what is most um, pertinent to the conversation is A, certainly that high contribution limit. But B, for those uh, like yourselves that are involved in real estate deals, if they use uh, certain tools such as leverage, they get mortgages for properties owned inside their retirement account. The solo K has some benefits that IRAs unfortunately do not have. So uh, certainly we're here to be a resource, but there there are certain account types that are probably more appropriate for, for certain types of strategies and income levels. Yeah, that's actually, uh, you know, Sean, you, you're, you're familiar a little bit with our accounts. So uh, my wife's an architect and she has a solo four hundred one k that that we've we've moved over to you guys and um, yeah it's it's been great to to supplement uh, the four hundred one k that I was able to roll over from from my time when I was when I was uh, with Medtronic for for more than a decade so it's been uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's it's been powerful for us and I would agree with uh, what you just said there but yeah everybody should go out and you know like like you say we're not CPAs uh, we're not investment advisors people can go out. And, and talk to those individuals in their legal team and in their advisor team to find out what the, what the proper structure is. 
So Sean, I mean, you've given, you've given us a lot of information on that. If you could go back and give yourself some advice when you were 25 years old, about 10 years ago, I'm guessing, uh, what advice would you give yourself after riding, riding some ups and downs over the past decade? Yeah, so we'll keep it clean, first of all, right? And uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But uh, so I, I think really is, as you look at um, the last 10 years, as I kind of take stock of everything, I think certainly it's, it's for me kind of a two-parter. Uh, first is that was really when I started to, in earnest, put in the work put in the work to um, add as much value as I could uh, with this firm and to try to work to be a more competent real estate investor. And so certainly putting in that work is is crucial, as we know with anything, right? And I think probably uh, the second part to that would be to, to trust to trust that work and trust that effort. Have conviction when you've put in that work that, that you can run with it. You know, you can go quick when you have it locked in and just have faith that you don't have all the answers all the time. But when you think it's the time to make the move, make the move, you know, with your investing, whether that's scaling up or or whatever the case may be. That's great. I think, you know, one of the, one of the things on the show is we like to have guests on that, that have interesting stories and that that talk about, you know, their path. And you, you hit on a big point, which is, you know, we talk about investments, we talk about how to diversify your portfolio and, you know, rates of returns and IRRs. And we firmly believe that the, the best investment you can make is in yourself. And whether you work for a company or have your own business, you know, like you said, Sean, you know, work hard, have conviction in what you're doing, passion for what you do. And that's, that's going to be your best investment. It's going to allow you to reach the next level of income. What was different about your mindset before that happened and what sort of flipped the switch to make you decide to go all in like that? So I think certainly at 25, we've all had different experiences, different successes and different failures. And, you know, as I kind of alluded to earlier, um, I started really even out of high school with the acquisition of some rental properties. And because I didn't put in that work, I had poor results. And so I think that for me, even at 25, I was a, a bit snake bit, really. I, I understood that people could be very successful and I wanted to be in my career as well as with real estate, but I was perhaps a bit more cautious than that typical 25-year-old who's maybe just initially launching their investments and, and really kind of digging into their career. So I think because of that, as we started to see, you know, a couple of years after that, there was obvious opportunities everywhere. It's as we all know, if you bought 10 properties during that time period, you wish you bought 50. If you bought 100, you wish you bought 500, right? So I think we all can look back and say, I wish I would have dug in a little bit more and I would have had more conviction to scale up a little bit more than I did during that period. I like it. That's a good answer. And if I could, guys, if I could just kind of throw something out there, you know, as Chris said, I've, I've known him for a few years uh, Chris has been instrumental to me personally. I don't know if you remember this, but uh, we met in the actual office years ago. Yeah. And because of my enthusiasm and my excitement, you were the real estate entrepreneur already, even though, as you said, you were that professional salesperson. And I'm just kind of spewing information as I'm probably still doing today. And I'm, I'm so excited to be talking to a guy that knows his stuff and you know, we're just, I'm just kind of shooting all over the place. And it was, it was kind of a crazy conversation. And, and you were, you were so gracious at the end of it. Uh, you know, the, the basic gist of what you said was, um, you know, if, if I could just give you some advice as someone who's been in sales for a number of years, it's really important as you're speaking with someone uh, as a potential client to make sure you're understanding specifically what they need and what they want so that you can hone in and add as much value as efficiently as possible. I'm, you know, I'm, again, I'm kind of paraphrasing this. That sounds better that was, than what I said, I'm sure. That sounded- no, no, no. It was massively helpful. And it, wow. was, it was such a great way to understand that, yes, you can be enthusiastic and you can be passionate. But as we all know, this is about the client and this is about serving them and helping them to understand how the service may or may not be beneficial for them. So I've, uh, I've remembered that and I, I do greatly appreciate you being willing to, uh, to share that with the young guy that was all over the place saying a bunch of crazy things. So thank you. For oh, that. well, you're, oh, well, thanks for sharing that too. And I, you know, like you, Sean, I had people that, that offered me advice early on and, you know, a lot of people make the joke, 
you know, about like a used car salesman or a salesman selling ice to an Eskimo. And, and that's simply not the case. I think sales is really about understanding your, your customer, your client, and, and what, if you, if, if you have a product that fits their need or a service that fits their need. And if it does, it's easy. It, it should be easy. Um, and it's really about, like you were saying, lis- listening and, and trying to have a genuine understanding about what's best for them. And um, yeah, I was, I was fortunate enough to spend a, a, lot, of, a lot of years with, with uh, ultimate clients or customers, I should say, that were, were p- really patients. You know, they weren't the surgeons, they weren't the hospital. Their patients, and, and if I've, I've had somebody tell me, if you do what's right for the patient, then your business is is always going to be fine. And mm-hmm. so I've I've tried to take that to uh, our real estate business, and I I've, I appreciate you saying that because I I've, I believed it then, I believe it even more now. Absolutely, and that story you said that's a hundred percent, Chris. I mean, I was like, he's been instrumental in my growth as well, and has given me tons of good advice, not only on sales but just across life, really. So. Um, I'm sure he's helped a lot more people than he'll admit, but yeah, solid dude. Absolutely. Glad to be on the show well, here. Oh, you guys, now I'm, I'm blushing here. You have to <laughs> tell her on the video. So Sean, we, we really appreciate you being on today, um, sharing a little bit about you know what a self-directed IRA is. Uh, we, we did a webinar together. If people, most people that listen to the show know, uh, they can access our book at nextlevelincome.com. If people want to learn more, about American IRA, what's the best place to, you know, to get some of these webinars, um, to find out about, uh, you know, more about the company or, or to set up a call with you? What, what's the best way to get in touch with you, Sean? Yeah, I appreciate that. So certainly the the hub is the the website, AmericanIRA.com. And so we do have the webinars, Chris, as you spoke about, we have that uh, recording from that joint webinar we did. And uh, that's certainly a place where you can find uh, some in-house webinars if you're new to self-direction and you just want to get a feel for it. And you're more of that... Um, visual audio type of blend and you want to be able to go at your own pace without having to communicate with somebody from our company. Uh, it's certainly a passive way to do it. I That's absolutely men- a great way I know way some engineers do that don't want to talk to people. They'll, they'll <laughs> talk that, so. That's right. That's right. My wife's an engineer by trade. Oh, and uh, <laughs> well, I, I like to think that she doesn't want to talk to me because of the engineer part. I think sometimes she just kind of doesn't want to talk to me, period. But um, yeah, that, that's certainly helpful. And um, we certainly, for those that want to reach out to me and, and obviously have a bit more of an interactive experience, uh, the web, excuse me, my email is sean, S-E-A-N, at AmericanIRA.com. And uh, certainly, uh, if, if uh, Caleb and Chris, you're willing to, we could put a link so that for those of you that want to sit down uh, in person or have just a phone consultation, uh, we can offer that. And really, as we've been saying today, our mission is just to bring awareness to the investment opportunities available to people. I've never sold accounts because ultimately the way that our fees are set up is we don't even charge the annual fee until you're making your investment. So there's no use in me trying to sell you a retirement account that you actually can't use and get value from. So hopefully you understand that a conversation with with myself, with our sales team is really going to be trying to add value, educate you and make you aware of the pros and cons associated with it. So AmericanIRA.com, email, um, the Asheville headquarters, that office number is uh, 866-7500-IRA, which is 472. Awesome. Thanks so much, Sean. We appreciate you being on the show. And we'll throw all of that into the show notes for a link to Chris's book, Next Level Income, as well as to the webinar he and Sean did, and to all of Sean's information that he just said, if you didn't have time to write it down, you can find the link right there. So Sean, thanks so much for your time today and best wishes to you. And we're looking forward to talking to you again soon. Gentlemen, thank you so much. You're, you're looking snazzy today. You're, you're uh, really hitting the right notes and I'm here looking like a gamer with the headset on and everything. So apologies, you guys look GQ as anything. So uh, thank you so much for having me and I uh, really appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. Awesome. Next time we'll have you live and you can look GQ too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sounds good. Sweet. All right, John. Thanks very much. Thanks guys. Appreciate it.